a well-known musician from back home shared these words with me. For two full days, I couldn't shake this feeling that has engulfed me. And I couldn't tear myself away from the news, trying to make sense of what was happening around me. Then, almost magically, an enormous outpouring of energy swept me away like a tsunami of light that allowed me to look inward and snap out of my shock. These words describe all too well how many of us Israelis felt following the October 7th attack on Israel. The history books will say more about what happened that day. But I can tell you, it was dark. The kind of darkness that doesn't only fill you with sorrow and grief, but also makes you question your faith in humanity and leaves you feeling paralyzed. That's how I felt, so much so that I wasn't sure I'm gonna have the strength to stand in front of you today. I was born and raised in Israel, and my family and loved ones are over there. So believe me when I tell you that what is happening in my home region is not simple. It's painfully complex. Many innocent lives are lost on both sides of the border. And it seems like dark days are still ahead of us. But October 7th was different than anything Israel has ever experienced before. That day, something inside of us broke. And to be honest, sometimes it feels like we're spiraling down towards the abyss and hope seems like a faraway concept. And then an instinct grabs hold of me. Maybe it's the instinct you develop when you grow up in a part of the world that has known so much grief. And that instinct is desperately trying to grab onto something, desperately searching for a spark of light in the darkness. We don't have, always have access to a dazzling sunbeam. And I guess that's okay. The stories that I want to share with you today have taught me that in difficult times, when there is no big source of light to be found, a small beacon can make all the difference. Stories like that of a six-month-old baby whose mom went missing on the way to a party. That was the party that was ambushed by Hamas. The de desperate attempt to track her down, this baby's dad agreed to be interviewed on the news. In this interview, he shared how much his baby girl needs her mom back. His words were answered by an overwhelming flood of breast milk donations. Many mothers met way to simply share their love. I wish I could tell you this story has a different ending. This baby's mom will never come home. She was hunted down on the way to celebrate love. But there is something in the outpouring of response from compassionate mothers all across the country that is profoundly human, that sparks a little light in your heart. A story like a woman's who woke up to discover her two brothers and their entire families were slaughtered in their home. 
she desperately felt the need for closure, for something to hold on to. But going back to retrieve any of their personal belongings was beyond her capability. There is no way she could handle walking around the scene where it all occurred. Word got out, and a group of men gathered and drove down to retrieve what was left of these lives. They knew they had little time before being asked to leave the area that was now officially evacuated. So they grabbed whatever sentimental items they saw. Kids' drawings, family pictures, frame above the little girl's bed. For this woman, it meant the world to have something to hold on to in her time of grief. This group of men, it was simply what they could do. They called it providing little pieces of energy. I like to think of it as little pieces of light. A girl who experienced unfathomable trauma barely said a word for days. Like other of the few survivors in her little town, she attended an improvised performance of the musician whose words I've shared with you today. After the events of October 7th, he made it his mission to perform and share the healing gift of music with anyone who wanted it, anytime, anywhere. When he saw that girl on the side of the stage, fully consumed by one of his songs, he invited her up. And from the first time since the darkness took her voice away, she opened her mouth and song came out. Each of his stories matters on its own. But it wasn't until these little sparks of light started to unite that enough light shined through to reveal what was starting to build, a network of interconnected support systems that emerged fueled by people's need to take action, to find some light in the darkness. And as the official bureaucracy wheels were still squeaking, this network started to grow within hours because people are stronger than systems and there is so much that needed to be done. There is a need for food, a need for medication, clothes, housing, a need to locate survivors. Each of these needs is unique, challenging in its own way. Food is different than doctors, is different than pharmacy. Taking care of the remaining family members who lost their loved ones is different than taking care of those who know their loved ones are still out there alone in the dark. And this all needed to be managed, coordinated, supervised, and it all needed to be handled with care. Once the realization that the task in hand was greater than anyone can take on their own started to sink in, connections started to form. The cry for help was heard loudly and clearly. And through personal networks and social networks, six degrees of separation turned into one. Chefs who emptied their pantries to provide meals for hospitals and evacuated families came together to make sure not a single drop of food is being wasted. Doctors came together with pharmacists to provide vital medication that the evacuees have left behind. Hotels were converted into housing, unfinished buildings quickly fixed up. Families opened their homes 
to the families whose houses were set on fire. People went back to the scene to try and find those who were still hiding, trying to find clues about those who were gone. And it was all done by volunteers, people like you and me. Nobody called them, they just arrived. All trying to do whatever it is that was in their reach, all reaching out to each other and in their connection, forming this massive, radiant, magnetic web. And this web had energy that grabbed anyone, anyone that was near it. One volunteer told me that once you touch it, you can't let it go. What does that tell us about humanity? Why am I telling you this? Because there is something in the story of the mobilization of an entire country that I believe is vital. Not only because it reflects countless acts of love, not only because it tends to the deep needs of victims, survivors, and their families, I believe this is essential to all of us because it tells us something about the human spirit. Because seeing an insurmountable amount of people who felt completely broken manage to get themselves up in the morning and shine their little light, that can give anyone hope. It gave me the strength to stand in front of you today. And not only did they manage to find the strength to focus on doing, and not only did they find some light in the darkness, they all somehow managed to find each other. They managed to get together in this massive makeshift system that in scale surpassed the government and is still growing and developing. Every day, they get to be a part of something that is bigger than themselves. Bigger than any of us would have imagined. And that is their source of light. There's power in that. It gave many of us the ability to look into the future and find some hope. And uh, maybe it's not the grand vision of hope that we sometimes envision, but again, that's okay. Often it's the small beacons that manage to find each other, that have the power to illuminate our world. Or like the musician called it, a tsunami of light that lifted the lid of our inner well and gave us access to a reservoir of strength that we did not know we had. And the biggest thing that it taught me is that that reservoir exists in each and every one of us. It's a choice. And in a time where it feels like the world is spiraling out of control, and we're more polarized and disconnected than ever before. I believe we owe it to ourselves to ask ourselves, when we wake up in the morning, what do we choose to focus our attention on? What networks do we choose to connect to? How do we choose to shine our light?